Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what I got from my local food bank this week. I like to go once a week for my family of five. It helps us to utilize food that normally would have gotten thrown out because a lot of this food is donated from grocery stores. If you're a working family who's living paycheck to paycheck and struggling, I hope you consider going to your local food bank as well because it's not just for the destitute. If you're new here, my name is Carolina. I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, product reviews, and pantry cooking on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I'd love to have you come join my YouTube family. I also have a Facebook group, Mama Bear's Homestead. Please come over and join me on Facebook. I love getting to know you guys and we share fantastic recipes there and just overall some great humor. So come join me on Facebook as well. All right guys, let's get into this food bank haul and I'll show you what I got. I'm gonna start with the milk. Each family was allowed two half gallons of milk, so I got that. Just having one gallon of milk per week really helps cut down on our milk costs. I also have to buy additional milk from Costco when I go once a month, but one gallon a week really helps cut down on that cost. And then they had some dairy-free cream cheese. They had a bunch of this, one of the only things available in the extra dairy option, which was nice. Um, I try not to grab the dairy-free too much because I know there's people out there who need it and we're not, we don't have any kind of food restrictions but it's worth giving a try and cream cheese is pretty expensive. So I went ahead and got, gave it a try. Plus there was about 10 more of these left. The food bank that I go to, you can shop at. Some, they do have options though, where you can get to go bags where it's already packaged out for you, or you can pick and choose what you would like. And then they had a bunch of extra cheese. So this was mild cheddar cheese. This is um, Crush Mar, which is a good brand. There's Boarheads too, Boarhead is a good brand. brand. So this is $11.99 a pound for this cheese which is, that's a lot for cheese, $11.99. So I was happy to be able to get some sliced cheese for sandwiches or maybe we can make something out of this. We don't necessarily have to use it as sliced cheese. So I was happy to grab that. And then for my frozen, I was able to get one choice, one protein, and I picked a T-bone ribeye steak. They also had whole turkeys, which was another one I was debating because you gotta have the freezer space to have a whole turkey but a whole turkey can get you a lot of meals for your family. But steak just sounded so good too. And I think I'm gonna, um, and the kids really like steak. So I was like, you know what? We don't get steak too often. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the T-bone steak. I love ribeyes. My favorite temperature for cooking this is a medium rare. And then they had a huge bag of sliced tomatoes already. I think they get these from Costco that they put on their sandwiches. This has a lot of juice in it already and it's, pretty much getting ready to be expired. Oh, it's dribbling. Definitely wanna be able to use this as sliced tomatoes. So I need to be doing something with this. So that's one of my challenges for the day is how to repurpose these sliced tomatoes into something we can use. And then for our sweet treat, they had mint Oreos. I have never seen Oreos there before. Mint is our absolute favorite as a family. We love chocolate mint, me and the kids especially. Husband's more of a vanilla guy, but me and the kids are mint chocolate chip. As you can see, we already broke into it. But I don't just wanna eat these, I wanna make something with it. So this is also on the list of making something with our mint Oreos. And then for the produce, every family was allowed half a bag of potatoes. Guys, well, calm down. So excited about these potatoes. Look at the size of this thing. You hear my turkey in the back? Frosting! She's getting mad at me, look at this. That's a huge potato. So I got some big half a bag of potatoes. And then every family is allowed a whole bag of produce. So I grabbed one thing of lettuce here. They didn't have too many um, that looked too good, but I grabbed one here. This is definitely something we could put on sandwiches or shred and use with tacos. And then before I saw the giant thing of tomatoes, I also grabbed just like three tomatoes, not too many. Betty Jan likes to eat these. She'll have this as a snack. Um, or we can use it. I was thinking maybe like a salad with that. And then they had giant sweet potatoes too. Oh, what's with the giant potatoes this week? So I also grabbed two big sweet potatoes. These are probably about two servings each. And then an onion. Always nice to have an onion on hand. And then they also had bananas. So I grabbed bananas. Oh, and blueberries. I had these, sorry, in the fridge too. And blueberries, they have a couple of squished ones. So I need to go through them and pick them out. But the kids love blueberries, so we're gonna pick those out and the kids are just gonna eat those fresh. And then some bananas here. Every family got a pack of raisins. Every family also got a bag of apples. In addition to all the produce that you could pick out. 
They had dog food and cat food, so I grabbed one bag of dog food for our dog, Jack. He's not very picky about the food, so that's nice. And then in the pasta, I grabbed one bag of elbow macaroni. And then we are allowed to get uh, three drinks. So I got, for the kids, I got them tiki punch. These, lots of sugar in these ones. 39 grams of sugar in one can. So this will be when dad does on duty. I'll give them these, right? <laughs> and then I got a jar of sauerkraut. Always nice, I love sauerkraut. It's really good for your gut. Plus you can reuse this jar. I like to water bath in these. And then they had some extra fun things. So I got some googly eyes that the kids, and the next time we decorate cookies or something, that'll be fun to have some googly eyes. And then they had this giant organic thing of, of protein. This is strawberry and cream. I have the chocolate one that I've gotten from there before, but I haven't had the strawberry one. I've been actually wanting to have some protein drinks in the morning because I just don't eat in the morning. I just drink coffee and I know that's not healthy. So this you can mix with water or almond milk, or I can even do 1% milk and then have myself some low calorie, low sugar protein in the morning to help get my body going without eating a lot. And then every family got 10 pounds of flour, so that's great to have. And now I'm gonna go over what kind of bread I got. They had lots of bread this week, so it was unlimited. Take whatever you could use. So I got a big loaf of sandwich bread here. Onion hamburger buns. I love the onion ones. They make really good for like sloppy joes or even egg salad goes really well on them. And then we had a couple of bagels, blueberry, mini cinnamon raisin. And then I got a thing of hot dog buns as well. And they had lots of English muffins, always tons of English muffins. So I grabbed the 100 calorie one because I want to start, I don't know, being a little more responsible in what I eat and trying to um, cut down on some of the heavy carbs. So I'm going to have those for me to try to make like breakfast sandwiches for myself. Um, and then we have a 24 pack of regular English muffins as well that are going to go in the freezer that are just perfect for the kids, mini pizzas, anything like that. So that's what I got from my food bank this week. I'm super excited about it. And one thing I always like to do is to cook up something from the food that I got. So hang on tight. I'll be right back and we'll cook up some grub. First thing I'm going to make for dinner is some mashed potatoes. I'm going to be peeling three of these Idaho potatoes that I got and I'm going to be cooking these in my Instant Pot. I really like making mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. I feel like it goes really fast and it's kind of hands off and a no brainer. So now that we have our three Idaho potatoes peeled, I'm going to be dicing them to about one inch cubes. You want them roughly the same size, but they don't have to be perfect. You can't really overcook mashed potatoes. Now that they are all diced and in there, I'm going to add some turkey stock that I have in my fridge. You can just use water, but I feel like adding stock really adds good flavor to them. And then I'm going to add salt as well. And we are going to cook these in our Instant Pot for 15 minutes and then let them natural release. The next item on the list that I'm going to take care of is this big container of tomatoes. All I did was put them in a pot with all the juice and cooked them down for a little bit. Now I'm using my immersion blender to blend them up and I'm going to turn them into a spaghetti sauce. Just something simple that we can do. After it's been cooking for a little bit, you can tell that it's been reduced probably by at least a third. I'm going to add some of this veggie roast seasoning to it. It's just something that I found in my drawer. It sounded kind of good. I need to get it used up. And then you always have to have Italian seasoning in spaghetti sauce, in my opinion. So I have dried here, and I'm going to put it in my hand and crush it up. I feel like that helps release the oil and the flavor of it. And then we are going to give that a mix. I'm going to taste it along the way to make sure that it's up to where I want it to taste. Especially with just plain tomatoes, you really got to add some flavor in there. So I'm putting some salt and then I'm going to put some fresh ground pepper in there. I gave it another taste and it was okay, but it needed a little bit more. I saw these diced onions that I have that I'm trying to use up as well. So I'm going to throw some of those in there. A little bit more salt. And I just wanted those to rehydrate and kind of give it some flavor. Onion and spaghetti goes really well together. And then it needed a little more Italian seasoning. So I put some of that in there as well. And it turned out really well. I'm super happy with it. And it's something that we're not going to use this time. But I'm going to store it for a meal later on in the week. Now let's turn our attention onto this steak. I have some blackened seasoning. This is like Cajun seasoning. I really like this. It's my favorite kind of seasoning to put on a steak. Now this I'm going to cook for the whole family and then I'm just going to divvy it up between everybody. Honestly, Gideon ended up eating most of it. <laughs> I don't know where that kid puts it. I have olive oil in this pan over here and I wanted to make sure that it's nice and hot so that pan is hot when I put that steak down. 
And while that steak is cooking, we're gonna come back over here to the mashed potatoes. These are done in the Instant Pot. They sat for about 30 minutes in there. That's kind of the nice thing about the Instant Pot is they can sit and wait if you need them to. And then I added some butter and I'm gonna add about a third of the container of this cream cheese that we received. Other good creamy options to add to mashed potatoes would be Greek yogurt or you could do sour cream. You could add half and half. I added salt when I cooked the potatoes so the only seasoning that I added to this was some cracked ground pepper. And then I did add some of our 1% milk because it does seem a little dry. If you make mashed potatoes with Idaho potatoes, they do tend to absorb the moisture more than if you were to use red or yellow potatoes. And let's give it a try and I think it tastes fantastic. So potatoes are done. Now let's go over and flip our steak. I wanted to make sure that you guys had the pleasure of hearing that sizzle. Nothing better than a sizzling steak. I'm turning it on its side here to try and get some of those fat caps cooked a little bit. Now, if you don't want your steak to get this dark on the outside, some of this is because of the blackened seasoning. Other of it is because of the caramelization. So if you don't like it that dark, you can always put your steak in the oven and that would finish cooking it as well. Now I'm gonna reuse the same pan, keep the same juices in there and everything, and I'm gonna put a little bit of peppered bacon. I had ran this bacon through the grinder, so that's why it's so small, and I love cooking with ground bacon. It's very easy to incorporate in a lot of different types of meals when it's packaged this way. So I'm cooking it for a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of an onion, not too much, that's one whole onion in that container. So I'm just adding a little bit to add some flavor, and this is what's gonna be my base for some green beans. So we got peppered bacon in there, we got onion. Just gonna cook that till it's about translucent. Couple of minutes. Cook it most of the way because we're adding canned green beans to it. So, and those don't require any cooking, just simply heating them up. So we're gonna add our green beans to this mixture, let some of that water cook off, and then also let them heat up. I'm gonna add some salt to this because yes, that bacon has a little salty flavor to it, but you need more for the vegetables that you're adding. And then I'm gonna add some Who's Your Sister sauce. It's absolutely my favorite thing to add and I think it goes fantastic with green beans. And that's all it takes is to whip up a side of green beans. So while the green beans are cooking and cooling and, and doing their thing, we're gonna come over here and cut this steak now that it's rested for a little bit. I'm trying to cut as close to the bone as I can and you can see it is running more on the rare than the medium rare side. But that's just the part that's closest to the bone and I can I ended up slicing that and then reheating it in the pan later. Husband got home later this day anyway, so that worked out to be able to reheat it and cook it more medium well for him. But this bigger piece didn't turn out too bad. It has some spots that were a little more mid-rare, but a lot of it was medium to medium well, which is perfect for husband and the kids. This whole side ended up going to the kids though. I just diced it up and I split it up between the three. So the kids had steak with ketchup mashed potatoes and green beans for dinner. Now let's give it a try. Wow, my kids are getting a feast tonight. Ribeye steak, green beans with bacon, and mashed potatoes. Nothing fills your tummy better. <laughs> you ready, Giddy? There you go. Oh, you need ketchup, don't you? Ketchup. Ketchup. Giddy. And last but not least, we don't want to forget about dessert. I'm going to be using those mint Oreos that I got. So what I have here is one of those big boxes of vanilla pudding. I'm mixing it with only two cups of milk because I want it to be super firm. And then we're gonna take roughly three cups of crushed Oreos. I didn't really measure, I just kind of grabbed a quart size bag and I filled it up. And then what we're gonna do is you're going to take out all your frustration. You're gonna think of an ex-partner and you're gonna break them up just like they broke up with you and they broke your heart. You're gonna beat them and you're gonna break it all up, break it up, break it up, break it up. Give it to your kids, whatever, get out your frustration, get those Oreos broke up. I'm gonna add a little bit of green food coloring, but you don't have to add that if food coloring is not your jam. Totally understand that and it's just as delicious without that. Now we're gonna add a tub of Cool Whip and then we are going to add our crushed Oreos on top of that. I'm gonna mix all this up just till it's nice and incorporated. You can add extra mint extract if you need to. I felt like it was unnecessary. You could also whip up heavy whipping cream if you don't have Cool Whip. Well, it's pretty good. It's not quite super duper green because the Oreos, no, the Oreos made it a little Darker. I think it looks pretty good though, pretty green. You can always add more or you could just skip the food coloring altogether if you're not into food coloring. Um, let's give it a try though.
Mm. You could always add mint extract if you wanted a little mintier. I think that tastes great though. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge, let it cool a little bit, and then that's gonna be our dessert. So we made some tomato sauce after those sliced tomatoes, repurposed them, get them used up since we couldn't actually use them as sliced tomatoes. We made some delicious whip topping pudding mint Oreo concoction. Tastes fantastic. Kids are gonna gobble that up. And then we made a fantastic yummy steak dinner. I wanna thank the food bank so much for not only providing for the community, but not judging those people who show up to there and just giving food to all those who need it. Thank you to all the food banks out there. And if you are in need of food, please consider going to your local food bank. That is what it is there for. Well, thank you so much for coming along, seeing what I got at my food bank and how I used it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time on Mama Birds.